I wanted to talk today about importing sheet metal into SOLIDWORKS. It's a question that comes up frequently during my training classes and also every once in a while in tech support as well too. So the question that comes up is someone gets a model that looks like a sheet metal part and they're trying to figure out how to get it flattened out for whatever reason. There's various ones that are out there. Um, sometimes these can be pretty easy and self-explanatory. If you've taken the training class, um, they actually show how to do it in there. They show the tools that I'm going to show you here, but they also have an ideal condition. So um, that's, you know, that's not very realistic to me. So what I want to show you is something that may occur out there and then maybe give you some reasons on why they could occur. So the first thing that we need to cover is what is a sheet metal part? There's actually three rules that we need to follow inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, here's the rules. The first one is um, it must be homogeneous in nature. Now, what I mean by that is that everything has to be the same thickness. You can't have one side that's at an eighth of an inch and the other side at a quarter inch and there's some kind of slope or anything. It has to be completely flat. So think about a sheet of paper or a sheet of cardboard or even a piece of sheet metal. Um, so keep that in mind. That's actually one of the biggest rules. If you violate that, eh, chances are SOLIDWORKS is going to be your best friend in the world on it. Now, the other thing that we have here is that uh, it has to be able to be unfolded. Uh, I kind of point this out due to the fact that sometimes people will get a stamping and a stamping is not folded into condition into the condition it's at. It's actually formed into that shape. So while it may be a sheet metal part and it's definitely going to be you know made out of sheet metal in most cases, um, it's actually not a SOLIDWORKS sheet metal because it doesn't follow this rule. The last rule we have is, is that you have to have bends in it as well too. So bends are going to allow you to unfold that and get um, whatever is needed for the bend allowances or k-factor to be calculated and stuff like that. So while it's not the most important rule, because technically I can make a zero you know, inch bend, it's going to be one of those more important ones that are there. So even thickness has to be able to be unfolded and has to have bends in it. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with that. Now I do have an imported model here. Let me go ahead and get SOLIDWORKS up. And what I have here is I've got an iGIS file. I'm going to drag and drop it in. That's going to pop up and ask about the diagnostics. I'm not going to worry about that because it does look like it's good now. And I can see the imported over here as well too. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my edges and take a look at this and go, okay, well, it looks like a sheet metal part. So here's the tool, tools that I need here. Now, the first one is I want to rip these edges. If I take a look at it, these edges on the outside are closed. So that's not going to be a good SOLIDWORKS part. So let's go ahead and add those in. So we're going to go ahead and call what's rip. It's called rip edges. We're going to pick the edges that we need there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab these. And we can put in whatever size we need there. So I'll go ahead and say OK to that. That's fine. Now, while taking a look at it, I can see that we got a nice little crack in there. That's going to work out good for us. It goes all the way up to here. When I come over here and take a look at it, hmm, that doesn't look as well. So I'm going to go home over to features. I'm going to go to cut extrude. Simply pick the face. Pick it once more hit convert entities, and then use my shortcut commands to get this to be processed all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and say through all, say OK. Yeah, that looks a little bit better to me at that point. So I have that going for me. Um, now that we have that there, I'll go back to my sheet metal tools. I'll hit the insert bends. I'll pick the lower face just to keep that as my zero face, and then say OK to it with the standard bend that's in there. Now I do get an error that pops up and says, hey, well, wait a minute, this isn't an error at all. This is just simply telling us, hey, I had to put relief cuts in here in order to do this correctly. So I'll go ahead and say OK to that. Now I'll take a look at it and I can see that there's a relief here, but SOLIDWORKS decided to go ahead and relieve the tab and relieve the flange over here. So um, this is the point where you have to take a breath and not get mad at SOLIDWORKS. This isn't really SOLIDWORKS fault. It looks like we might have had some issues. And what we need to do is we need to figure out what had happened here. Now, if I roll back before any of the sheet metal commands happened, we can kind of take a look at. We know that there's an issue up here. And when I take a look at that bend, I start to see, well, it's even thickness through here, but it's not even, well, it's even thickness through here as well too. It's really here. In order to have even thickness through a bend, those two arcs would have to be concentric to each other. In fact, if we come in here and take a look at it, we'll do a convert entity on these. You can see that the two centers are actually not on top of each other. In fact, to really see this, let's grab that, take it, snap it here. You can see that the radius would actually have to fall right here in order to keep the centers common there. So that's our first issue that we ran into. The other one was we kind of got a clue when we ripped the corner here. If you take a look at it, you can see that this is coming in at 0.079 inches. 
and this one is coming in at 0.059. So these aren't the same thickness. That first rule that we talked about must be homogeneous. These aren't homogeneous, so this is probably where our issue came from. So I'll go ahead and say OK to this and uh, simply close this out. What do we do when we're in a condition like this? Well, it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll drag that part back in. We'll run the diagnostics this time. Maybe that might cure our issue. I'll go to the face and I'll simply click it here. And it's showing me that this face has something going on. There's a fault with it. Um, I don't think that's really the problem because our problems were up here and to the side. And also, it wasn't really the import causing us all the heartache. It was more the geometry just wasn't nice for it. It didn't follow one of those rules. So we're going to go ahead and attempt to heal all. Say OK to that. And then I'll throw my edges back on as well, too. All right. So the thing here is you have to make a decision. Do you want the inside of the sheet metal or do you want the outside of the sheet metal? In my case, I know the outside dimensions are what I'm looking for here. But the other thing is, is I'm kind of creeped out by this whole bend here and stuff like that. What I want to do is before I do this next step, let's go ahead and get rid of this bend. Now, in a lot of cases, it's actually pretty easy. So in a case like this, what I'll do is I'll rotate this around. I'm going to pick that face. I'm going to go to my Surfaces tab. Now, if you don't have it turned on, right-click on any of the tabs here, and you can turn your Surfaces on right there. When I get in there, I'm looking for the Delete face. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I'm going to make sure that I'm on Delete and Patch, and I have my Preview. And if I take a look over here, I can see that I have a nice sharp corner there now. I'll go ahead and say OK to it. And you can see that basically it removed that fillet surface and turned it into a nice hard corner for me. All right, so I think I prepped everything I need to prep here. Um, remember, I'm looking at grabbing the outside of this. Now, the next tool that I'm going to use, there's actually two options. There's the offset surface or there's the knit surface. Now, if I go to offset surface and grab it, you'll see that it does state that it is an offset surface command. But if I change the number to zero, and hit enter, you'll see that it turns it into the copy surface command. So this will give you a zero offset, basically a copy of that surface. Another way to do it would be to go to knit surface. Knit surface would allow me to simply pick the faces out here, very much like the offset, except I don't have to put a zero in. That's probably going to be the biggest difference there. Now, if there were any issues with your geometry, you'd have the gap control and there'd be some boxes listed here. We don't have any issues, so we're actually working with fairly decent geometry. I'll go ahead and say OK to that. And what I have is a nice little wrapping on here. In fact, if I grab that surface knit, you can see it's kind of the outside of the sheet metal part at this point. Now, I don't need the solid anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on the solid face. And I'm going to hit the hide body. So I'm going to hit it and I'll be left with the surface. Now, if you think about it, this is the first tenant of a sheet metal part inside of SOLIDWORKS. It is homogeneous in nature. Unfortunately, surfaces are also zero in thickness as well, too. So we're only halfway there. The next thing we need to do is turn this into a solid and actually make it the same thickness throughout. Now, under your surface tab still, there is a thicken command. We'll grab the thicken command, grab the surface, and we should see a little bit of a preview here. You have a couple options, offside, outside, inside. We even have a mid one as well, too. We're going to go ahead and go with the offset this way, and then we can put in whatever our gauge thickness is on our material. Once I say OK to that, we'll see that we have turned that surface that was zero thickness into a thickness, a solid with homogeneous thickness. So that's going to be that first step. And then we can kind of fall back into exactly what we did last time. We rip these edges. We're just going to simply pick the three edges or the four edges here. We'll say OK to it. We'll go back to the insert bends. We'll leave the number in there for the radius, which is OK for me here. We'll say OK again. SOLIDWORKS will pop that same message saying it's putting in a relief just like it did last time. Although here we can see another relief was added in. Oh, and our tabs are still here as well, too. Once I hit the flatten command, we can see that everything is out working exactly like it should, and uh, we're all good to go there. So the main thing here is, here's the steps. Take your solid, turn it into a surface, so it's the same thickness, re-thicken that, and then go through your standard rip and insert bends. That should be able to get you most of the way there. Now, 
Sometimes you'll run into situations where these don't work. Those are going to be perfect times to give us a call on our support line. We'll be more than happy to take a look at it and see if maybe you just haven't ran into those weird situations or maybe something's missing. So anyway, just want to let you guys know about this. I thank you for your time and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.